Hello everyone, my name is Brandon Holt. I am a research illustrator and instructor within the Center for Biomedical Visualization, Department of Anatomical Sciences at St. George's University School of Medicine. The techniques that I would like to showcase within this 20 minute time slot focus on new features offered in ZBrush 2020 and 2021. I don't have time to show you all the newest features, but I put together a small demonstration highlighting a few of them. The newer features that I will be covering include, but are not limited to, poly paint adjust colors, extractor brush, dynamic subdivision, dynamics palette, cloth brushes, and micro poly. So let's say that your client wants an image of a laceration and they want you to cover it up with a bandage. Some people might go straight for pencil and paper and then finish it off in Photoshop. But in reality, ZBrush is the perfect candidate for the job. I am going to go ahead and speed through this first part because none of this focuses on newer features, but essentially I'm starting off with a polysphere as my base mesh and loading my reference images into Spotlight. I will then give my sphere a base coat of poly paint before projecting details onto my sphere using Spotlight. All right, so let's just say you have spent hours and hours and hours on this masterpiece and it's exactly where you want it. But then your client says that we, we want to change the skin tone. You know, our, the demographic has a darker skin tone and this just won't do for um, the piece that we want. This is where we can use poly paint adjust colors. I can open up the poly paint sub palette over on the right and I can select adjust colors and this little menu here will pop up. I like to adjust RGB gamma, RGB contrast, RGB intensity, and HSV hue to reach the desired outcome. So let's just make this a little darker. That's going to be good enough for demonstration purposes. And we can go ahead and sample colors again and use our paintbrush and really kind of blend this in to make it look nice. Now, let's say that your client wants you to move the laceration to a different location or add an additional laceration. We can use the extractor brush to do just that. The extractor brush works by comparing undo history from a previous time to the current. So if there's information that you do not wish to extract, you can go to your desired place in the timeline that you would like to have a starting point and press control. So we could do that by going to our undo history here, pressing control, and then going back. But in this case, we will not need to use that because we started out with a perfect sphere and we our, our topology is really hasn't changed that much from the original. So let's go and find our extractor brush. We can press B, then go down to extractor. And in order for us to extract our sculpt here, and we can press G. And you can just run across our sculpt, and that will extract and create a new alpha and a new texture that we can paint with. Okay, and now we can just sculpt in our laceration over here. And we can change the size of this. Let's make it smaller. But there's other ways that we can use the extractor brush. Go ahead and turn these alphas off and we can go and do a drag rectangle for instance. Um, let's press let's press G and we'll drag out a rectangle. Might have picked up a little bit of this one, but that's okay. Okay, now we have a new alpha and a new texture. 
we could sculpt with. And we just pull these out. All right, perfect. I'd say this guy is pretty well cut up. It's now time that we can move on to our bandage. This will be a great opportunity to experiment with dynamic subdivision and the dynamics palette. In order for us to take full advantage of dynamic subdivision, we want to have a low poly model with zero thickness. We can achieve this by using Z Modeler. Z Modeler allows us to move individual points around, insert edge loops, and extrude geometry using polygroups. Now that we have our Band-Aid and our cotton pad base mesh created, we can experiment with dynamic subdivision. We can activate dynamic subdivision by clicking dynamic, which is found underneath the dynamic subdiv within the geometry sub palette. And once we click dynamic, and we're gonna go ahead and turn on our polyframes, shift F, and we can activate and deactivate dynamic. You can kind of see what it does. So it basically um, simulates what would happen if you add two subdivision levels to this model. But in this case, um, the amount of polygons and active points isn't actually changing, so it's just a simulation. Uh, once we have dynamic on, we can add or subtract smooth subdivision levels, which is what the simulation is, and we can mess around with the thickness. And I think this thickness right here looks pretty good for demonstration purposes when we're trying to um, create this band-aid. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with our cotton pad down here. Go down to the cotton pad, scroll down to geometry, select dynamic, we've got two smooth subdivision levels, and I can add some thickness to our, our pad. And if you want a more rounded surface, you can tell when you want uh, the model to smooth your subdivision levels. It can be after or before your subdivision. Now let's explore our Dynamics palette and a few of the settings within. In order to simulate Dynamics, we need to have at least two subtools within our project. And we would like our Band-Aid to simulate with the lacerated sphere from earlier, so we need to import or insert or append our lacerated sphere into our subtool menu here. Um, but first, let's prepare our Band-Aid and cotton pad so that they are directly above within the y-axis of the lacerated sphere. So let's go to rotate, make sure that we are affecting multiple subtools, and we'll just go ahead and rotate here. Hold shift to snap it in the 90 degrees, and we'll move it up. Now let's go ahead and um, move the cotton pad away from the band-aid. Now we can append our lacerated sphere. Click append and select lacerated sphere. And I want to make sure that this sphere is at the right scale. So I can go down to deformation and select unify from earlier. You can initiate your calculations over here on the left by clicking collision volume or recalc. You can make adjustments to simulation iterations at the top, and this will determine the number of simulation cycles for each movement. A higher number equals a higher accuracy equals a longer render time. Uh, the firmness will help you simulate what kind of material your object is made out of. A silk cloth is going to have a lower number, and a thick leather material is going to have a higher number. Gravity strength will affect the speed of the collision. By default, gravity works in the Y axis, but if you want to change that, you can rotate your canvas and select set direction. So we can just rotate this and click um, set direction. Collision volume resolution will help control the smoothness of the collisions. So a higher number equals smoother transitions and a lower number equals blockier transitions. For this demonstration, I have already configured in the simulation iterations, uh, the firmness at three, 
uh, self-collision will prevent any of the model from um, collapsing in on itself. I have my gravity strength set to five and I have the max resolution of 3200 set. The first thing I would like to simulate is the cotton pad. And before I do that, I wanna make it a color that's a little easier to see. So I'm gonna go ahead and make it white and go to color and fill object. And for my Band-Aid, I was going to go ahead and make that a more Band-Aid color. So I can press C and take a sample from my reference images over here, go back to color, and select fill object. I'm going to go ahead and hide my Band-Aid for now. And I'm just going to simulate the cotton pad dropping onto the surface of this sphere. So if I go ahead and turn collision volume on, I can then go ahead and run the simulation. Perfect. Um, now we can go ahead and make our band-aid visible and we can do another calculation here and select run simulation. And I think that looks pretty good. But let's say that your Band-Aid is not lying exactly the way you want it to. You can use cloth brushes and transpose cloth with masking to make finer adjustments. Let's go ahead and here we have our newest calculations. Now we can go to our transpose cloth brush by pressing B and you can locate it within here. It looks like it's at the bottom, transpose cloth. And we can just go ahead and move our Band-Aid and watch how it interacts with the other surfaces. And let's say that you want to preserve parts of it so that they don't change. We can go ahead and mask out this area. And then we can just continue to transpose further. All right, looks pretty good to me. For our final touch, we can experiment with micropoly. And micropoly is located within the geometry tab um, go down to our dynamic subdivide and turn micro poly on and you get all these different options um, We can try to mess with like a different Oxford pattern and You can change the scale of this by messing with the subdivision levels And then you can just go ahead and cycle through all these different patterns to find out which one you like best I think this pattern small one does the trick for making it look like a fairly believable band-aid. And the only thing left to do now is to give us a nice little render to show our client. And we can do that by selecting VPR. And there we go. We have a nice fleshy sphere with lacerations and a band-aid covering them up. Since we still have a few minutes left of this demonstration, I would like to show you another neat trick working with dynamics. My goal is to create a latex glove on a hand with realistic wrinkles and folds. I have started with this hand arm base mesh that I borrowed from one of the default ZBrush tools that comes with the software. Next, I duplicated the model and deleted most of the arm to create this glove using a trim rectangle. The next step is to inflate the glove found under the deformation sub palette and make sure that there's an opening for the arm to go through. Now we are ready for dynamics. If we turn on dynamics and run the simulation, you will see that we need to make a lot of adjustments to make this work properly. It just kind of melts onto the floor with these settings. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Command Z to start from the beginning. And um, I want to increase our simulation iterations up here at the top to 500. I wanna set our firmness down to one I want to make sure we have at least one level of self collisions. I'm going to turn our gravity strength down to 0.1 and I'm going to set our resolution all the way up to max 3200. And the key trick here is to press contract. And this will tell the glove to contract around the hand. And we don't want it to just contract in every single axis. 
We just want it to contract in the Z axis. And one more setting that we can change is to press, um, is to change our inflate down to 0.5. We'll go ahead and get our new calculation by clicking recalc, and then we can go ahead and run our simulation. As you can see, we're starting to get a, a lot of nice little folds all over, and if we want to pause it here, we can just click Run Simulation again, or press the Escape key. Now let's go ahead and explore our model a little bit. Getting some nice folds in the thumb, getting some really nice folds on the tips of the fingers and on the side of the hand. Um, but let's say we would like to continue adding folds to this. This is a great time to experiment with our cloth brushes. And I prefer to use the cloth hook brush. And the hotkey for that is B, C, K. I'm going to increase my brush size just a little bit. And I can start pushing and pulling in areas that I want to add folds. So grab down here. And I'm just pushing ever so slightly. I don't have to sculpt any of these nice folds. And they are dynamically interacting with our hand geometry underneath. And to put the finishing touch on this glove, I'm going to go over to our dynamic subdivision and I'm going to add some thickness to this glove. Go in here and look at the base. Uh, maybe that's a little too thick for a latex glove. Bring it down. And perfect. Pretty exciting, right? Well, that's all for today's demonstration, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching.